In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google's Keyword Planner for Google Ads. It's a fantastic free resource. You can use it to find keywords for your paid Google Ad campaigns. You can also use it as an organic keyword research tool. With that said, let's get into it. So I'm already in the Keyword Planner here in an example Google Ad account. To get here, you just go ahead and click on Tools and Settings at the top and then Keyword Planner underneath Planning and you'll come through to a page that looks like this. Now, the best way for me to explain how the Keyword Planner tool works is to demonstrate an example. So if you go ahead and click into discover new keywords, I'm going to enter football boots in here. The example that I'm going to use is a business that sells football boots online. You would want to enter a term in here that is closely related to the products and services that you sell. Don't need to overthink this at this point. Just get something in there. If nothing comes to mind or you'd rather, you can enter the URL of your website in this section down here instead. Google can use that to find keyword ideas, but most people just go ahead and enter a term up here. Then go ahead and click on get results and you should see something that looks similar to this, right? We've got trend graphs at the top, we've got data down here that I'm gonna explain um, in a minute. Now, I do need to quickly mention that if you've got an inactive Google ad account, so if you haven't entered any billing information or you haven't run any Google ads and there's no ad spend accumulated in your account at all, then you may not see this version of the keyword planner. You may not see this trend graph up top and down here, instead of fairly accurate average monthly searches, Google might be displaying um, ranges that tend to be quite broad. So if you're finding that your data is not as good as you're missing some stuff, it's probably because you're not running it out of an active Google ad account. If you're not ready to be running a Google ads yet, but you want to be able to do proper keyword research, my recommendation would just be to create a very quick campaign that runs on a dollar a day. That's what we do in a lot of our example ad, ad accounts. It's simple, it's easy, not gonna cost you a lot, but allows you to do proper keyword research. You can just have it come into the homepage on your website, something like that, okay? So before we get into the specifics and I sort of show you how to find good keywords and things like that, there's a few things you need to take care of first. The very first thing is location, okay? It's very important that you select the right location, the location where you deliver your products and services. You don't want to generate keyword research in a country that's not the right one, for example. That's that's not valuable information, it actually be quite misleading, quite damaging. So it's obviously defaulted to the UK because that's where I'm based. But if, for example, I sold these football boots in the UK and the US, I would absolutely be adding that in. Perhaps you're on the other end of the spectrum. Perhaps you are a local business that only operates in a specific location. Like if you only operated in the city of London or in a certain state in the US, then you would obviously want to go ahead and be more specific. You can get quite specific here and just make sure that you select the locations where you can deliver your products and services. That's what you want to enter in here. For the purposes of this video, in fact, I'm going to click cancel, it will default back to the United Kingdom. That's what we're going to go ahead and use. The next thing you need to look at is the time frame. Now, the default is 12 months and this particularly applies to the, the trend graph. I mean, also the, the search volume. And that's fine for most businesses. But if, for example, you're advertising a particular product or service that's quite new, you might really need to reduce the time frame to get an accurate reading on what the search volume is, for example. If you're advertising something based on a recent TikTok trend and no one was searching for it on Google nine months ago, you don't want to be doing this over 12 months. That's not going um, to work, okay? So I'm going to minimize that down. Just a couple of things you need to be aware of before we start looking. Then we scroll down to the keywords themselves. And there's obviously a few things to look for. That's one we entered. Here's a list of ideas. You can see that Google has given us 3,154, which is fantastic. Uh, it might seem overwhelming, but it's, it's a good thing. I'll show you how to help with that soon. And you can see obviously average monthly searches. Obviously a hugely important part of deciding which keywords to target is how many people are actually searching for that keyword. That's what Google gives you an indication of here. Three months change, you've got a bit of a, um, a bit of a trend here. Year over year change, you've got more useful and accurate trend data. But that's just kind of interesting information. You can see where things are headed. This competition column combined with top of page bid, uh, low range and top of page bid, high range, give you a really good indication of how expensive and how difficult it's going to be to get space on that keyword, for your ads to show up when people are searching for that keyword. If there's high competition, that means there's lots of other advertisers competing for those spots. And then obviously the, the these ranges here, so for football boots, it's 15 pence to 38 pence, which is actually very cheap, um, give you an idea of what you're likely to spend per click when you are advertising 
to those keywords. These aren't super accurate. Sometimes the ranges are really large, but it does help give you an idea. You're not, I'm not gonna see this data and then come up with a, a five pound cost per click or anything like that, okay? And then finally, add impression share this column here. It's all blank because this only applies if you're actually using these keywords in your ad account, in your campaigns already. And it shows you what um, share of the total impressions on that keyword you're already um, capturing within your location, okay? Because this is an example ad account and we're not advertising to any of these keywords, obviously it's showing us blank. Then before we get into the actual keyword ideas themselves and start picking them out, we want to filter this list and reduce the overall number of keywords that we have to work with and get rid of some of the ones that are just not worth including in there. So if you go ahead and click on add filter and then keyword, and then change contains to does not contain, and then add in a bunch of uh, words here like when, why, how, um, who, what, free. And adding this filter, if I click apply now, what this does is it removes all the keywords that contain these search terms. Now, in this example, there's probably not gonna be that many. Not many people are searching for things like what are football boots, most people understand that stuff. With other keywords, that can be quite significant. There's lots of people um, searching for things like that. And you want to remove these search terms, these keywords, because if someone's searching for what are football boots or um, why something something, they're probably not in the buying phase yet. There's not much buyer intent there. They're in the research phase. You want to be advertising to them once they've done their research and then they're actually searching for something um, to buy. So you just want to get rid of those sorts of, of words, particularly things like free. Those are not good quality keywords to target. The next thing I want to highlight is this refined keyword tool on the right hand side, which is really helpful and really fantastic. And in this football boots example, there's some great uses here. So firstly, brand or non-brand, okay? So if I click down on this, we can see that there are loads and loads of keywords. The majority of the keywords that come up when you search for football boots are related to specific brands in the football boot space with Nike and Adidas being the top two, unsurprising. Now, for example, if we didn't sell anything Nike products in our football boot store, you would absolutely want to go in and deselect that. And then the same with some of these other ones, okay? Very, very um, useful, quick little thing that you can add in, save you a whole bunch of time. There are also lots of other categories beneath here. So we've got it by retailer, um, there's other brands, but if we go down into specifically other things, perhaps we only sell um, men's football boots or women's football boots, something like that. We could remove some options, to get more specific. Perhaps we use certain colors, unlikely, but maybe we just do black football boots because we're more traditional. Um, and then there's other things like types. Okay, so here we've got stirred, artificial grass, you know, different football boots for different surfaces that people play on. You might not advertise uh, you might not offer products that are related to some of these um, specific things. So what's shown here will be different depending on, again, the keyword that you put in, but really good to use this refined keywords tool, reduce it down and just specifically get to the ones that you really want to get to. So if I just get that out of the way now and we can go through and have a look. So when it comes to actually selecting keywords that you might want to use in your Google ad campaigns, you want to focus almost exclusively on buyer intent. And this is something that's quite subjective, trying to think, is someone closer to buying if they search for this keyword versus if they search for this keyword? You have to make a judgment call on that and you will get better at it over time. But what I wouldn't worry about at this point is if they've got high competition. You see that with tons of search terms, tons of keywords. And I wouldn't worry about what you think might be too expensive bids either. Um, the more expensive cost per click keywords are often the ones that convert better. That's why they're more expensive because more advertisers are competing for them. Um, so it just follows that you think, oh, I, I, you know, I, I might not want to advertise on this keyword because it's too expensive, but actually if people convert better, then it may be well worth doing. Um, so I wouldn't worry about any of those things at this point. Even with what look like quite expensive bits, you're better off to test out that keyword, see if it is actually too expensive when you know how well it converts and then make a judgment call. Then when you come to selecting your keywords, I don't want, particularly if you're getting started, you to go through all 2000. Maybe if you've refined it really down to 200, 300, you can go through all of those, that's fine, but don't go through a monstrous amount. What you're looking for when you're getting started, I think, is 10 to 20 keywords to start with. That's it, that's your range. It will really help when you're first running Google ad campaigns to reduce the number of variables that you have to track, monitor, and optimize. And you do that with not having, you know, tons and tons and tons of ads running, and you do that as well with not having tons and tons of keywords running. So you want to be scrolling through these lists and finding ones that you think are highly related to your products and services and have reasonable buyer intent, 
Okay, that's very important. Then you want to come up with a list of 10 to 20 of those. And that's where you want to start using. I would recommend that because we're going with a, a smaller list of keywords than you might otherwise use initially, that you go with keywords that have relatively high um, search volume. So what do I mean by that? Obviously, it's going to vary massively depending on industry, but you'd be wanting to be above the average. So if we just scroll through this, for example, and let me just change this out. So we've got more examples. If I change 10 to 100 and we scroll through here, we get a feel for what the average is coming up initially. OK, so I would say here anything above about seven, eight thousand is on the higher side. OK, oh, that's on the higher side. So we go back up to the top. We've got some up here, 33, 40,000, 18,000, 18,000, 20,000. So I would primarily focus on these higher volume keywords initially because we've got a smaller number of keywords. Now, once those are up and running and you've you've got your feet wet and you've got familiar with the platform and how this works, you can absolutely come back in and test some of that later. So let's do a quick example and add some in, right? Let's, let's select some options. So remember, we're looking for the higher value ones. We tend to find these up here. Men's football boots. If we sell men's football boots, that's absolutely fine. Cheap football boots is an interesting one. Do you sell cheap football boots? If you do, that could actually be quite a good keyword if that's your one of your competitive advantages is that you're uh, are really inexpensive. If you're not, if you uh, operate in the middle or the higher end of the market, that's a keyword you absolutely want to avoid. Um, you know, Sports Direct, that's a branded one, maybe something you want to use. Adidas Predator football boots. Well, if you sell Adidas Predators, that's absolutely fantastic, okay? Um, classic football boots, again, is that something you do or don't sell? So much of this is gonna be revolved around your particular products. Um, that's got too low search volume. AstroTurf boots, another great example. Do you sell AstroTurf boots or do you sell boots that work on grass? You have to make that up. Right, so we just got two selected there. I'm not gonna go through a whole lot and, and test that out. But what you do want to do is once you've got some um, selected, is add these into a plan, or you can actually go ahead and add them directly into a campaign, into an ad group, if you've already got one set up. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and create a plan here. Now, when you do that, I strongly recommend you change broad match to phrase match. I'm gonna create a whole new video on keyword match types, very important topic, so make sure you subscribe for that. Um, and then you can very quickly just click here, add keywords to create plan. And there we go, those keywords have been added. They've effectively been saved in a folder for later. As I said, if you didn't wanna add them into a plan, you can directly import them straight into your um, campaign. So before you go ahead and actually use these keywords in a campaign, it is worth taking a look at the trend data. So you can click back up here and you can add in the various keywords that you found um, up here, and that will give you this, this trend graph, this trend data provided you're an active Google Ads account. And what you're looking out for here is you're just making sure that you've not got a really um, bad looking graph where the results are dropping off and the search volume is is massively decreasing, which is going to be rare, but it's worth quickly checking. It's not worth investing the time and effort into something that's not going to be around. This sort of fluctuation is absolutely expected. I'm sure this is seasonal yet. Yeah, so football boots, unsurprisingly, there's more searches in September, which is when most Football, most people, their season starts in September in the UK if they play football and then November because we're talking about Christmas presents and things like that. So that doesn't surprise me in the slightest and this graph is fine, but just something that's worth checking. So that's the basics of using the Google Keyword Planner. I'll have more advanced techniques and more advanced keyword research strategies coming out in future videos. So make sure you subscribe for that. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.